What's up, guys? It's your boy Paul. I'm back with you. This is right out reviews, man, and we are watching The Crown, episode nine, season one. Well, Queen Elizabeth has had to do some things, and it's been tough. This whole situation between her and her sister, her and her husband, her and her mom. It's like, well, I mean, obviously putting her as a queen and that's elevating her to a status that she once was not, and now that everybody has to see her as before and above her when all of those people may not have done so have to see her as queen instead of as uh, elizabeth and it's it's wearing on all the people margaret went on her mom philip it's, it's wearing on everybody it's, it's getting pretty tough and so she's have to step outside of herself it's like uh, what her grandma has said uh in when she first i think maybe the second episode first episode is that the crown is the most important. You know what I'm saying? Everything has to come second to the crown. Her responsibility and role as queen is the most important. And we've had to see her sacrifice a lot of things. The sacrifice is tough too because it's a sacrifice for her, but others don't see it that way because it involves them. You know what I mean? Like Philip, she's got he's got to kneel before her. And he wouldn't want, she wouldn't want her, I feel like she doesn't want him to have to kneel, but the crown requires for him to kneel. And so she has to sacrifice her desire for her husband to lead because she has to be the leader because she is the queen. You know what I'm saying? In the same way with her, her sister, she's like sacrificing wanting her sister's happiness because she has to represent the crown in the best way. Woo, that's tough stuff because everybody sees her as doing wrong, but she's sacrificing her family for this. While at the same time, it looks like the family's like, we're sacrificing for you being the crown, but she is sacrificing herself, her love, her admiration, her her kindness and dearness to her family for that. Maybe that's tough, dude. That's tough, man. I've been going on way too long about this, man. This show's pretty insightful as to the queen and her life and how she's been. But let's jump into the episode. Four reactions, man. You can check out at Patreon. Love to see you there. Got exclusives, YouTube early releases, movies, TV shows, anything you can imagine. You can get it, man. If you don't want to go there, it's cool. I'm glad you're here on YouTube watching, man. And if you like this afterwards, man, go hook a brother up with a thumbs up. If it's your first time here, check out more videos, more episodes, whatever you want. If you like it, go and subscribe and hit that noti bell so you don't miss anything. I appreciate you guys one more time. So let's go and jump into the episode nine, The Crown. Bro, those cars look like tanks, man. All metal. They will not be destroyed. You run through a building with some cars. Will you marry me? Oh, poor G. That sounds like a no. <laughs> no, it's not a no. No, 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 no. That sounds like a no. Twelve no's. I would love to, on one condition. That you don't still hold a torch for her. I know how close you were. There's only you. Man. What's wrong with this brother, man? He's out getting drunk. What, has he got a job or something? Does he do anything? That's weird, man. I don't know if I could uh, go without knowing where my wife is for... However long, I'm sure she couldn't do that for me either. I trust her uh, uh, with everything, man. But it'd just be weird to not know where she is and what she's doing. But maybe she does. Maybe she he's out with his buddies and she knows that. So, but I know she she got she getting cranky, faking like she's asleep. Could do coming home drunk all the time. Probably going out with them dudes at that that little thing he did where he was uh, watching the video on those places that hated the throne or the imperial, um, the, uh, whatever you call it. They had taken over, taken over places. Imperialism. 
I've just been talking to Jock about your 80th birthday. Oh, don't mention it, brother. Oh. Oh, and it's going to be Graham Sutherland. Who? The painter. He's got quite the reputation. He's a modernist. Uh, I'm not sure I can trust a modernist with an English name. Sutherland. As I said, it's, uh, it's grand to be home again. And I look forward to being back at work just as soon as possible. Hmm. That's good. He ain't 80. He ain't that old. Even you said yourself that I have good instincts. You do. I might well live to regret it. That and a good many other things. Good night. Dang, they live in different bedrooms? They're asleep in different bedrooms? Wow. Man, it reminds me of I Love Lucy. They were sleeping in two different beds. And I ain't as rich as them, so I guess two different bedrooms. The more money you got, the more separated you are. Will we be engaged in flattery or reality? Are you going to paint me as a cherub or a bulldog? As you search for him, perhaps I can implore you not to feel the need to be too accurate. Why? Accuracy is truth. <laughs> for accuracy, we have the camera. Painting is the higher art. <laughs> I paint a bit myself, you know, and I never let accuracy get in the way of truth if I don't want it to. I wish there wasn't a factory in the background. I leave the factory out. <laughs> what pose are you thinking of? Seated. A good right standing. It might be more commanding. <laughs> so funny. I ain't gonna ask him what he gonna do, then he does the opposite. I liked him. Yes, I could tell. <laughs> he was smitten, blushing like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> he is rather a wild. <laughs> Got low. Hello. Oh, well, he. I'm Porty, huh? Going to America? Why? Well, that's where your girlfriend's from, isn't it? Fiance. Fiance. Goodness. Mm. <laughs> You'd approve, I think. Well, can I meet her? If you promise you won't scare her. Why would I scare her? You're the queen. Margaret riding them horses, man. She got to think. We have interests in common. Horses aren't an interest for you, they're a passion. A passion your husband doesn't share. He has other passions. So I hear. Oh, man. She didn't even, what, she didn't even say nothing. I was like, what's that supposed to mean? She don't want to hear the truth, though. She worried. At some point, Every leader must ask he is giving to the country or taking from it. You have been taking for the very last time, Winston, to bid you to stand down. I will in good time, at the right time. The right time was nine years ago when you lost us the election. And I have since avenged that defeat by winning us the last election. I won us that, Winston! I won that! And with every misjudgment, with every miscalculation with every utterance you make. That appetite to return to the left is growing. Be careful, Anthony. Too much excitement is not good for one so soon after an operation. Spoken by a man who only two months ago was effectively dead. <laughs> Which makes two of us. I have something that you will never see again. A clean bill of health. Uh, a Stalin said the same. He died grovelling on the floor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I have that paper that says they got a clean bill of health. I mean, wins it, man. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Ooh, look at that. Some people just don't know when to quit, man. How many paintings does your husband complete in a year, Mrs. Sutherland? Three or four. Would you care to guess how many I average? Ten? Fifteen? Sixty. <laughs> of 
course. I'm just a hobbyist, an enthusiast of a major artist like your husband. <sighs> Taking his time. <laughs> Freaking Winston, dude. <laughs> He's sleeping. <laughs> Day. Am I to be allowed a peek? No. Nope. Well, why not? I could give you advice. <laughs> After all, I know this face better than you do. If you've made the neck too thick or the, the arms too long, I can tell you. I find in general people who have very little understanding of who they are. One has to turn a blind eye to so much of oneself in order to get through life. Just concentrate on the good and all will be well. You're not just painting me, you know. You're painting the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, the highest ideals of government and leadership. Hey! Just remember that. <laughs> uh. But if you were to put him out to stud, he could make you far more. He's a recognized champion with a top notch pedigree. You could stand him at Wolferton stud for top dollar. Well, well what's top dollar? That's the decision then. Good. And in the meantime, I'll ask if I can get you a direct line. To you? Yes, to me. Why? Or is anyone else you wanted to speak to here? No. Good. In the course of his lifetime at the stud, he might sell 500, 600 foals, making me over 200,000 pounds. Creating an entire generation of offspring, like old man Carnarvon. Your friend Porchy's father. Porchy? No. Like I said, his father. Yes, they're both called Porchy. That he'd had so many affairs, an entire generation of British aristocrats was related to him. An illegitimate porchy in every great house in the land. A numerical dyslexia. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. Bro getting kind of mad, ain't he? Oh. They studying each other. <laughs> Cause that's what uh, Winston's been doing. Now he's looking at what he did. Are they drawing each other's pictures. <laughs> Oh, this is his office. Ah, when he said the portrait would be done in his office, he's preparing himself on how to draw his contours and all that stuff for when they actually have the, the drawing session, I guess. Since this is to be our final session, we wanted us to be all alone, in silence, preferably. Yes, yes. I'll be a good boy. <laughs> uh, fighting a battle, a bloody battle. Are you winning? I hope so. You think I'll like it? I think that's possibly too much to ask for. But I do take comfort from the fact that your own work is so honest and revealing. Referring to in particular? I was thinking especially of the goldfish pond here at Chartma. The pond? Why the pond? It's just a pond. It's very much more than that, as borne out by the fact that you've returned to it again and again, more than 20 times. Well, yes, because it's such a technical challenge. It eludes me. I think all our work is unintentionally revealing, and I found it especially so with your pond. The framing itself indicated to me that you wanted us to see something beneath all the muted colors deep down in the water. You saw all that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Perhaps that says more about you than me. I know, for real, right? Perhaps. The one you call pastoral. With all that gnarled and twisted wood, I found something malevolent in it. Where did that come from? My son, John, passed away, aged two months. Oh my. I am sorry. That speaks truth about art, though. 
one way he speaks to the soul of one person, but another way, if the artist's intentions wasn't that. You have five, yes? Four. Marigold was the fifth. She left us at age two years, nine months, septicemia. Two years, nine months. Regretfully, though perhaps mercifully, I, I, I was not present when she died. We bought Chartwell a year after Marigold died. That was when I put in the, the pond. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You know, I was just about to say, even if the author doesn't intend it, but it was intended. He just didn't know it. Wow. Something deep. <laughs> Art reveals who you are. Ooh, that's tough. That was really good. Man, that vocal in that song had me just like, ooh, for a second. <laughs> Happy birthday, my darling old pug. That is an excellent marriage there, though. They got a wonderful marriage. Dang, they put 80 candles on that cake, huh? <laughs> and that cake blow all about. <laughs> Bro, oh, that's not good. You trying to talk about he can make it? He can't make it up them stairs. Uh, I am deeply honored to be here today. No politician has ever received such an honor before, and I am deeply grateful. I am aware, however, that after having served my country. Resignation is a word that hangs in the air. <laughs> and indeed, it is the perfect occasion for it. Uh, uh, the stage is set, and the audience is assembled, all ready for a grand valediction. <laughs> There's only one problem. The lead actor has forgotten his life. <laughs> <laughs> instead of standing down, he is taking an encore. When your political colleagues to present you with a portrait by an ambitious modernist, is it a gift or is it a curse? But he likes him. I look forward to unveiling this painting. He don't like it. <laughs> I had the anger on his face. And then he turned and smile. A fine patriotic piece of modern art. I don't like that, huh? Queen don't like that, huh? He didn't like it at first. A fine patriotic piece of modern art. I understand you've rejected the painting. I have. On what grounds? That is not a painting. It's a humiliation. Oh, he rejected How shall I paint him today? Ah, sitting on a chair, producing a stool. That's not how it's being seen. That is how it is. And I will not accept it. It is a betrayal of friendship and an unpatriotic, treacherous, cowardly assault by the individualistic left I accepted this commission because I admired you, and I came through the experience admiring you even more. You make monsters of everyone you admire. It is not a reasonably truthful image of me! It is, sir. It is not! It is cruel! Age is cruel! 
If you see decay, it's because there's decay. If you see frailty, it's because there's frailty. And I refuse to hide and disguise what I see. If you're engaged in a fight with something, then it's not with me. It's with oh. your own blindness. <sighs> Reveals who he truly is. And you don't want to see it. I mean, it's just retirement. Uh, this is retirement saying, hey, it's time. You've done your duty, man. And you're becoming a shell of who you are. And he don't want to be that way. Oh, man. But when he called him a friend, he was super stoked about that. I cannot go on. <laughs> You've said that before. And this time I mean it. I'm tired. You've had enough. I have, my love. <laughs> he never, he, he sees it now. I really have. Good. I bet that brother was honored, too. He said he was friends with him, man. He was like, wow. Because he admired him before he came in. And he admired him even more when he left. And she told, he told her. That's why he's sitting down, huh? If I'm being frank, there were one or two moments when I might have even hoped for it, too. Prayed, no doubt. <laughs> And you wish for Mr. Eden to take over? I do. Well, that will make him happy. For a day or two, he might even stop cursing me. Then he will be overwhelmed by a job in which no man can ever succeed and yeah. curse me again for leaving it to him. It might be an idea not to tell him that before he starts. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, however, will I cope without you? You will be fine, ma'am. I have nothing more to teach you, which is why it's time for me to leave your majesty. It's just, it's so great, because he's got that, that character with so much tension, because he feels like he could do everything and does everything, but he has so much respect and honor for Queen Elizabeth. So much respect and honor. And it's for the the monarch, for the office. He feels like he can tell her what to do, but that if she doesn't want to, then, whoo, hey, she has a, she can do what she want. Yes, that's good. Two thousand guineas for that. Get that as long as what he needs to do, and it bears fruit, I don't mind. Well done, Porchy. Well done, Porchy. I hear he's been given a direct line. Who? Porchy. We can call straight in. Tried to get one for Mike and was refused on account of him not being a family member. Porchy is like family. Is he? Yes. A part of the furniture. Well, as long as you don't sit on him any time soon. That's a good old comeback, though. But part of the furniture, that's not family. That sounds, like, disrespectful. Seemed to go well. Yes, it did, isn't it? You're right. Mm. Well, he said as long as you don't sit on him, though. Dang. Bro, fill up super heated. That's yes, sir. Can you leave us now, please? Yes, ma'am. So I wasn't talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to Philip. <laughs> Dang, it's getting heated, man. That brother was mad. Porchy is a friend. And yes, there are those who would have preferred me to marry him. Indeed, marriage with him might have been easier, might have even worked better than ours. But to everyone's regret and frustration, the only person I have ever loved is you. And can you honestly look me in the eye and say the same? Hmm. My lords, 
Ladies and gentlemen, dear Winston and Lady Churchill. That <laughs> marriage is so beautiful though. And for whose wise guidance during the early years of my reign, I shall always be so profoundly grateful. From the fact that in losing my constitutional advisor, to whom I shall look for help. Even though he was right, he still couldn't handle it. He had to burn that sucker to the ground. It's too much truth. Wow. Wow. Hey, man. That, this episode, yeah, it was good. It was touching, man. It was powerful. It was moving. I mean, that power of art was something, man. It's just, it reveals who you are. And Churchill didn't, didn't see, the, didn't want to see the truth and he saw it. And it terrified him, man, that he so much that he had to burn it. Wow. And then just that relationship between Philip and and Elizabeth as uh juxtaposed to um Miss Churchill and Winston Churchill and uh, show their love for mutual respect for each other. And then th the other way around seemed like they were just at each other's throats. Man. And then just admitting the reality of her situation with Philip at the end. That was that was big. She said that it would probably have been easier and better and worked out smoother. But she couldn't do what she didn't love. Man. And then at the same time, with that it's like I don't know, there's something about that scene with uh, uh, Miss Churchill looking at that burning painting and saying is she losing something to her husband's pride again, you know? That's tough, dude. Good episode. Hey, I'll see you guys in, in the next episode. I believe it's a series finale, or that could have been a series finale. I don't, I don't know, sometimes they have nine episodes instead of ten. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, man.